Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, I continue introductory lectures into solid geometry, basically specifying certain objects which we are dealing with. Uh, today uh, I will uh, explain uh, another object which is called the prism. Now this lecture um, is presented uh, on unisor.com. That's where the whole course of advanced mathematics for teenagers is presented and I do suggest you to um, uh, watch this lecture from this website because there are some um, explanatory notes very important so you can just uh, read the notes as well as a textbook basically um, par in parallel to listening to the lecture. Alright, so let me just talk about prisms um, a little bit. Uh, so far, we have introduced um, points, lines, planes, uh, and angles between the planes. Then we have introduced this, uh, a, a cylindrical surface. Now, I am going to use the concept of a cylindrical surface in this particular lecture, which was just the prior lecture to this one. And um, if, uh, for whatever reason, you forgot the material which was presented in that lecture, I do suggest you to watch this lecture again or read the notes uh, on unisor.com website uh, about what is a cylindrical surface, because it will be extensively used in prisms and cylinders, obviously. Okay, so, prisms. All right, first of all, let's imagine that we have a plane. I will try to position it somehow. Um, it looks like a horizontal plane, right? Um, let's call it alpha. And I will call it a base plane. Then we will have another base plane, which I call beta. And let's imagine that these two planes are parallel. Now, I did not explain exactly, I did not define the parallelism, but obviously you intuitively understand that the parallel planes are just like that, and they never intersect. Um, this is, among all other um, introductory lectures, um, the lecture without any kind of a uh, exact definition or proofs, etc. I'm just explaining the concepts which I will be dealing in the future in more detail. So, this is the concept of a prism, and I would just like you to understand how I make this particular object. So, first of all, we have two parallel planes, uh, which I will call the basis, um, alpha and beta. Um, to differentiate, I can call this one the bottom base and this one the top base. Fine, no problem. Now, next what I also have is, I have a line which is not parallel to these, so basically it intersects both of them. Let's call it D. Then, on this particular, let's call it the bottom plane, the alpha plane, I have certain polygon. something like this A, B, C, D, E, F well in my case it's a the polygon with six sides doesn't really matter how many sides it can be three it can be 25 some kind of a polygon now what I'm going to use next is I'm going to use this polygon as a directrix of a uh, cylindrical surface and this line as generatrix which means basically that from each point on this polygon I will draw a line parallel to my generatrix and I will actually um, make this line uh, long enough let me just make this a little bit differently. Let's make it this way. Would be better. So I will make this line, these lines, long enough so they will intersect this particular plane as well. These are parallel planes, right? So from each point, I will go to the corresponding point here. 
so it will be something like this something like this something like this and I will call the corresponding points whatever goes through the point A it intersects at A, uh, A, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime, and F prime. So, now I'm considering this cylindrical surface which is formed by all the lines which are going through every point on this polygon and they intersect the opposite base, the top base beta. Um, alternatively, you can consider that I have one line from A, let's say, which is parallel to D, and I'm just moving this line, and that's how I'm forming a surface. So, actually, my lines, this one, should be solid, because it's visible, and this one should be solid, the E line should be visible. All right. And the D line is visible. Now these are not visible. I think that would be and and A also is visible. So I think that would be a better representation of my figure. So the visible lines are solid and invisible lines are dotted. Now, what is a prism? <laughs> okay, the prism is the object which consists of part of the cylindrical surface which is in between these two planes and these two polygons on the planes. So this part is called a prism. Well, that's it, basically. I mean, that's the definition of what is a, a prism. Now, as far as the terminology is concerned, uh, points A, B, C, D, E, F, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime, and F prime, and again, it doesn't really matter if this is a, hex a hexagonal or triangle or, or a square, whatever it is, any kind of a polygon. So, all these points, the end points of every um, segment, uh, are called vertices, exactly the same way as with polygons. Now, um, the segments from A to A prime, from B to B prime, so all these vertical segments, as well as segments within each base polygon here and here, like a prime, B prime, B prime, C prime, etc. All these are called edges, um, and all planes also have their own uh, name. Um, one plane is the polygon which is at the bottom as a, as a base, another polygon is on the top, and we have many different sides here. So um, all these uh, pieces of planes, pieces of corresponding planes um, are called either faces, so all of them can be called faces, or you can uh, alternatively call these faces as base faces. These faces on the, on the sides you, ca you can call lateral faces or just sides, sometimes it's called sides. Um, so that's basically all the elements of the prism. So we have vertices, we have edges in between them, and we have faces which are different. Can be side face, can be uh, lateral or, or lateral face, can be base face or another base face, top base face, bottom base face, etc. So that that's the terminology. Now. It's very easy to prove that every 
lateral face, every side, is a parallelogram. Now, why? It's because these two lines are supposed to be parallel to these ones, right? And these two lines will also be parallel to each other because the, the planes are parallel. It should be proven, ab absolutely, and I'm going to do it when I will discuss the prisms in more details. Right now I'm just introducing and I would like you to have a feel what exactly the prism is. So these are parallelograms. Obviously, uh, two bases, two base polygons are congruent to each other. Again, it's all um, uh, uh, the consequence of uh, every side being a parallelogram, for instance, and some other properties of the angles. So, then I would like to introduce another terminology. If this line D, uh, the, the generatrix, is perpendicular to basis, then the prism is called the right prism. Well, the same way as a triangle, if you have a perpendicular one line uh, side will be par uh, perpendicular to another, it's called the right triangle, right? So the prism is called the right prism if every edge on the side of the prism, which is parallel to this one, is perpendicular to basis. Then the prism actually stands right. Well, that's why it's called right. Now, otherwise, if it's not perpendicular, it's called oblique. Um, and it's uh, actually tilted like uh, the Pisa Tower, the Tower of Pisa, remember? Well, it's actually round, so it's kind of a cylindrical, but uh, cyl cylinders also can be oblique, and we will talk about this. But anyway, if it, uh, if it was a prism, it would be an oblique prism. Now, what else? Um, uh -huh. um, another classification of prisms is based on how many um, sides have the uh, polygon at the base. Now, if the polygon is a triangle, the prism is called The prism is called triangular prism, obviously. If um, you have a rectangle um, at the at the at, at the base, well, the prism would be called well, guess what? Rectangular. <laughs> Something like this. Something like this. That's a rectangular prism. Now, rectangular prisms are usually considered uh, only those prisms which are right rectangular prisms. Um, so, not only these are rectangles, but also every side is also a rectangle. So it's a right prism where every edge on the side of the prism is perpendicular to the base. Okay, what else? If you have a square here and obviously there, and it's a right prism, and this edge is equal to this edge, so all edges are the same, you will be dealing with cube. So a cube is also a special prism. It's a right prism, it's a rectangular prism uh, with all edges equal to each other. So the rectangle in the uh, in the base is basically a square and every um, parallelepiped, uh, not parallelepiped, the parallelogram, parallelogram which is a lateral face is actually a square as well. What else? Um, mm -hmm. I just mentioned parallelepiped. So if you have a parallelogram at the base, then the whole 
uh, prism is called parallelepiped because every uh, face of this prism is actually a parallelogram. Um, the, the the base is a parallelogram by by definition. Now all the sides, all the lateral faces, are always para par parallelograms uh, in the prism. So every side is parallelogram. In this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, six different sides, two bases, and four uh, side uh, faces. All of them are parallelograms. So that's the parallelepiped. What else? Well. Again, if you have something like a um, uh, six-angled polygon, uh, hexa he hexa hexagonal, hexagon, um, if you have a hexagon uh, at the base, then the, the, the whole prism is called, obviously, hexagonal, right? Now, um, there is another special kind of, a, um, kind of prisms. If you have a regular uh, N polygon, with n uh, vertices, but it's regular, like regular um, polygon with, with, with five vertices, with 25 vertices, doesn't matter. And it's a right prism, which means all these uh, edges are perpendicular to the base. Then we usually can uh, uh, talk about n prism. So n prism is uh, the regular n vertical, n, n vertices and an angular, an angular um, uh, polygon, the polygon, the regular polygon with n sides and n vertices, um, and it's a right prism. Then we can talk about n prism. Well, that that's all terminology. And again, the purpose of this lecture was just to introduce um, all the different concepts related to prism all the different kinds of prisms, etc. So in the future, if I will, for instance, discuss or, uh, some kind of a problem, I will say, okay, let's consider we have a uh, parallelepiped with such and such dimensions or angles or whatever it is. You will know what I'm, I'm talking about. A parallelepiped is a prism with every side being, every face being a parallelogram, etc. So this is just terminology. Mm, no, no concrete properties or theorems or anything like that. That would be in the future. And again, the purpose of this lecture just to introduce you to a concept of a prism. I do suggest you to read again this lecture on Unison.com. Uh, it's basically like a textbook, the notes to this lecture, and um, um, you will read basically the same information which I am right now talking about. Uh, but it would be better for you just to remember all the terminology because it's written and you will read it. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.